In this concept video, we're going to take a look at how you square the club face. Um, specifically, we're going to look at a case study where we look at the difference between shaft rotation and in-plane movement to square the club face. This is a really important concept for most golfers to understand, but tends to uh, have big impacts on the middle to higher handicap golfers. Uh, if you have a ball flight where the ball tends to start straight and then curves a bunch, it usually means that your face to path relationship is off and you are using your swing in order to uh, kind of accommodate for that poor relationship. So in this video we're going to take a look at how learning to close the club face a little bit differently can have a domino effect that's very positive for most people's golf swings. Alright, this student came to me uh, primarily to help him with slicing the ball off the tee. and I always uh, ask why a person feels that they're doing what they're doing and he felt when he slices the ball that he gets over the top of it which is a very common phrase to use to describe uh, slicing the ball now you can see through transition that he doesn't really get um, over the top of it you can see that the the plane or the path is actually uh, quite good or more um, draw biased now <clears throat> what he does during the release is very much an over-the-top or, or steepening movement but um, this could be one of those cases where a golfer feels like he's doing one thing and the descriptions that his buddies or other coaches may be giving him might not resonate with what's in, what's in his brain but either way um, if you've watched my high level of the slice video you understand that there's two different things you gotta do you gotta square the club face with more rotation and you gotta get the path a little bit more in and out this is a clear case of when going for the face is going to be much easier. So when we look at this position, we can see that the club face is pointing above the horizon line, right? So if this was straight up and down, um, then if he just flipped and got the club vertical with the club upside up or pointed straight up and down or perpendicular like that, then the club would be pointed relatively um, in the direction of the target. But again, with the shaft vertical. If you want to have shaft lean, then you need to get the club face on the other side of vertical by the time you get to impact. Now, this is a great uh, or a very clear case study on this uh, shaft movement because he doesn't appear to have very much shaft rotation. And because the club face is exaggeratedly open, it's actually you know more open than vertical what you'll see is he's able to hit balls that start online um, but they they do tend to slice when his uh, club face is square and they start online and you can see the reason why if the club is not at least perpendicular there then he has to actually get the grip behind the club head in order to get that to point at the target and so that's what he's able to do but as a result, you can see that his path is very much low to high, it gets narrow very quickly, and it tends to move to the left. So we'll see that whole combination through here. This is happening, uh, this club face is rotating towards the golf ball purely by straightening the arms and the grip kind of freezing in space. But then because of the uh, movements and the momentum of the club you'll see it finish very low and around his body so now what we'll do is we'll take a look at the drill that we used and the after effects and then compare it to a pro who uh, closes the face in a slightly different way now if you remember his path was pretty good so we weren't doing a ton of path work uh, but we did use a little bit of path feedback down at the bottom um, to work on uh, I think we used either the railroad tracks or the four square, but one of the visuals to kind of help just clarify where the path was coming. But you can see that he's definitely using the motorcycle and uh, getting the club face into more of a closed position and learning to move the club face in space um, with that closed or what I would really call square club face position. And you can see that as a result, he's already having a bit more body rotation and staying in his posture a little bit better. Now here's his attempt at a live ball. This was about the third ball after doing uh, the drills and playing around with it a little bit. You can see that it's much closer. So now it's to vertical, which means if he has a, a scoop and gets the shaft vertical, he's at least going to hit it straight. And then gets a little bit um, 
it's still a little steep for my liking with the arm movements, but I know he's been working on that and he's been making good progress. But compared to the golf ball, it doesn't get nearly as outside to in. So this ball is actually going to fly fairly straight and draw a little bit because of the toe contact. Um, but we can see that there's a dramatic difference in his body position here in the follow through. So now a quick side by side comparison is going to show some pretty big difference on the club delivery. And again, all we really worked on was club face rotation. You'll see the exit pattern that we um, didn't really talk about happen somewhat naturally. You can see a much better shoulder tilt, much better uh, spine angle. The exit path of the club instead of working more almost around the belly button is now working around the shoulders there were lots of positive changes this golfer went from shooting um, having a low score above 100 to after about six weeks of of practicing this and a couple other concepts was able to break 90 with his low score of 85. Um, so it can happen really quickly. This was a, a really fun case study to see some pretty big improvement um, just by clarifying a key concept of understanding how to square the face with shaft rotation. There are a handful of tour pros who have later club face rotation. Um, this is an example that I know pretty clearly, uh, Rory Sabatini. Um, you could also look at Phil Mickelson or possibly John Sendin. Um, uh, Charles Howell III's earlier stuff. You can. There are a number of golfers who uh, close the club face a little bit later. So you can see that we're not quite at that same point where the case study um, was, but you can see that the club face compared to parallel, it's a little bit above it, but the club face is in a more open position. So from there, he could either use the strategy of casting the club or scooping like the amateur did, um, or he could get his hands ahead, but he would have to start really bowing it down. And you can actually see in this video, right around here, he starts to really flex that lead wrist as the hands work across. It'll be even more clear from uh, the down the line. So, or sorry, from the face on view over here on the right. Here he is, we know that the club face was in a slightly open position. And then through here, you're going to see the effect of his wrist flexing. And this is a pretty good picture here where you can see that even through impact, he's one of the rarer golfers that flexes the wrist through impact, not letting it extend on the way through. Um, and that's because he uh, uses a timing where he closes the club face with rotation, but he does it late. If you close the club face with rotation, you're going to have a much better chance with the driver, and you're going to have a much better chance having lag, and you're going to have a much better chance to get into an impact position where your hands are in front of the golf ball. If you don't close the club face with shaft rotation, you're not going to have lag. Your hands will have to be more even with the golf ball or even behind it, and that's going to produce uh, certain low point control issues or um, contact issues, and it's typically going to show up as problems with the driver. If you're not sure how you square the face or any of the other key components to your swing pattern, then head over to golfsmartacademy.com. Um, I've got a playlist here to, that's uh, linked to um, videos all related to squaring the club face. And that way you can really see different strategies and understand and, and play around with some different drills to get feelings to help you uh, learn to square the club face a little bit differently. If you're not quite ready to sign up for a free membership, then please like our YouTube video here and subscribe to our channel so that you'll get uh, early access to any updates that we create here in the future.